Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a very interesting example. It's an example of a real pulley system. When we say real pulley system, what we mean is that the pulley itself has mass and therefore contributes to the motion and acceleration of the system. If they now give you a system like this with a pulley and they ask you what will be the acceleration of the given system, that is not as straightforward as before because of the pulley. Now assume that the pulley has um, it's, it's like a solid disk, so we know that the moment of inertia of the pulley I is equal to one half mass of the pulley times the radius squared, so it has moment of inertia. How will we then solve a problem like that? And the way to go about it is to concentrate on the pulley itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and find the angular acceleration of the pulley, which is caused by the tangential, the, 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 the tangential forces acting on the pulley. So you can see here that mass 1 pulls down on the pulley. There is a tension in the string and the tension will be downward and that then causes a tangential force, a tangential torque pulling the pulley making it go this way. Mass 2 causes a tension in this direction on the other side. Again, it will cause a tangential force to act upon it, so a torque will try to pull it the other way. And of course, this tension 1 is larger than tension 2, the acceleration will be in this direction. And viewed by the masses we have here, I think we can assume that the acceleration will be in this direction. All right. Now, what is tension 1 and tension 2? Well, tension 1 can be found by saying that it's equal to the weight of this object, which is m1g, minus the mass times acceleration of this object, m1a. It will be less than the weight of this object by the amount m1a, so it will be equal to the weight of the object minus the force required to accelerate the object downward, which is ma, according to Newton's laws. We can then say that T2 is equal to m2g, it's equal to the weight of the mass m2, plus the force required to accelerate it upward against gravity, so plus m2a. So now that we have the two tensions in the string, now those are the only two forces causing the wheel to accelerate, now we can use the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law, we can take f equals ma, and write the rotational equivalent, torque is equal to um, i times alpha, and that would be the I, the moment of inertia of the pulley. That would be the angular acceleration, which can be uh, related to the linear acceleration by the equation A tangential is equal to uh, R times angular acceleration. So that we could say that the angular acceleration is equal to the tangential acceleration divided by R. And this, of course, is what we're looking for. If we're looking for the acceleration of the system, we're actually looking for the tangential acceleration. That's the same as this, so that's how it's related to the angular acceleration. So what we're going to do first is to find the angular acceleration with this equation and then convert to the tangential acceleration. So, what is the torque on the system? Well, we have the larger tension, T1, pulling this way, the smaller tension, T2, pulling the other way. So assuming that direction of the acceleration, we can say that's equal to the torque caused by mass 1 minus the torque caused by mass 2 equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. The torque is force times perpendicular distance. Uh, that would be the tension. That would be T1 times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation, which is this distance right here, which is the radius of the pulley. And here, the same thing. This is the radius of the pulley. R, and so this would be the line of action of the force times the perpendicular distance. So this would be minus T2 times R equals the moment of inertia, which is one half times the mass of the pulley times the radius squared times the angular acceleration alpha. All right, now since we're looking for the tangential acceleration, we can replace the angular acceleration by A tangential over R. So this can now be written as T1 times R minus T2 times R is equal to one-half times the mass of the pulley. I should have said mass of the pulley right here. All right. Times R squared times alpha, and alpha can be written as A over R. Of course, and this R cancels out that R. And finally, we can now plug in what T1 and T2 are equal to, which is right over here and right over there. So we say M1 
g minus m1a times the radius minus t2, which is m2g plus m2a times the radius is equal to 1 half times the mass of the pulley times the radius times a. Now notice that the radius appears in every one of the terms. The radius appears here, here, and there, so we can get rid of the radius in all three terms. So now we're left with just the masses and the acceleration. Now what we need to do is move all the terms that have acceleration on one side and all the terms that have no acceleration in it to the other side. So let's get rid of all the parentheses. So we have m1g minus m1a minus m2g minus m2a equals one half the mass of the pulley times a. So now moving all the terms with the a to the left side, everything else to the right side, and just to indicate where all the terms are, there's one over here, there's one over here, and there's one over here. So let's move all those terms over to the left. So that leaves us with minus m1a, minus m2a, and minus one half the mass of the pulley times a equals, moving everything else to the other side, we have a minus m1g, remember when we cross the equal sign, the sign changes, and this becomes plus m2g. And then notice all these negative signs on the left side, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. So this becomes m1a plus m2a plus 1 half mpa equals a positive m1g minus m2g. And then I can factor out an a on the left side, I can factor out a g on the right side. So this becomes a times m1 plus m2 plus 1 half the mass of the pulley equals m1 minus m2 times g. And then finally, I can solve for a by dividing both sides by the coefficient of a. Let me put that over here. And so now we can say that a is equal to, over here on the, the right side, we have m1 minus m2 times g, divided by this whole thing over here. That becomes m1 plus m2 plus 1 half mass of the pulley. Now when we plug in the numbers, m1 is 10 kilograms, so we have 10 kilograms minus 5 kilograms times g divided by mass 1, which is 10 kilograms, plus m2, which is 5 kilograms, plus half of mass of the pulley, half of 2 kilograms is 1 half times 2 kilograms. I'll just write it out. And so now when we grab our calculator, we say this is equal to 5 divided by 16. So this is equal to 0.3125g. That's acceleration. Of course, if you want to know the exact number, g is 9.8. So times 9.8 equals 3.06 meters per second squared. And there's our answer. Now, to recap, since the pulley has mass, the best way to solve a problem like this is to simply say what is the tension on the left side, what is the tension on the right side, and we can figure it out like we did before using Newton's second law. We realize that the pulley has a moment of inertia and that it will experience an angular acceleration which is related to the tangential acceleration or linear acceleration like that. We then start with the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law instead of F equals ma, F becomes torque, the mass becomes a moment of inertia, the linear acceleration becomes angular acceleration. Then the torque is simply equal to the torque experienced by on one side minus the torque experienced on the other side, so T1 minus T2, or torque 1 minus torque 2 equals I times alpha. The torque is simply equal to the force times the perpendicular distance, that would be the tension times R minus the tension times R equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. And then when we plug in what these are equal to, tension 1 is equal to this, tension 2 is equal to this, we plug that in here, we isolate A, and we solve for the acceleration that way. And that's how you solve a problem like this, where a pulley actually has mass. It's a little bit more difficult, but the key is by using this equation right there. Hey, give that a try.